Today's society puts a lot of pressure on young girls to have outward beauty. The Photoshop beauty pics on glossy magazines likely contribute to that. But what about beauty on the inside, which I feel is a lot more important? Joining me now in studio to talk about it is Renee Peterson. She's a registered nurse and the founder of the Beautiful Inside Academy. Welcome back to BCN, Renee. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. You bet. Beautiful Inside Academy, what is it all about? Well, Beautiful Inside Academy is something that I'm so deeply passionate about. I have been running this academy for 13 years, and it's a sacred place for young women to come and to have the exploration of that inner self, to develop those inner tools, inner strategies, inner mindsets, to launch them to the next level of who they say they want to be. So, yeah. Why is beauty on the inside so important? Well, I believe that once you're connected to that place, I mean, I mean, you know as well as I do, right? We you talk to someone, you see them, and then what actually comes out of them is what makes them actually truly beautiful. And so I think when they truly identify it on the inside, it just really helps them even appreciate the external even more and just helps them connect to the beauty of their life, the beauty of who they can be, the beauty in others. So it's just fun foundational work as far as I'm concerned. I have a daughter who's 21 years of age. She's a beautiful young woman, inside and outside. And uh, you know, when she was younger, the preteen, sometimes the awkward years, yeah. she would always say, you know, I'm not good enough, I'm not beautiful enough, and I'm encouraging her, loving her, praying for her. I'm like, yes, you are, you're beautiful. But it didn't resonate with her, no matter what her mother or I said. Mm -hmm. It was like almost stranger saying, you're beautiful. Oh, I must be beautiful. Right. But what mom and dad said, it didn't really resonate with her. Why do you think that is? Well, I know it's kind of that adolescent brain, right? Like they just thinking, you're my parents. You have to love me. You know, you have to say that about me. And they're already in that identity kind of uh, questioning, going, who am I? Am I worthy? Am I lovable? Am I enough? And so that's where I tell the parents, hey, that's okay. That's normal. It doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. But that's where I come in. And I get to partner with you as a mom, partner with you as a dad, and support you in installing those beliefs that you so wish that your daughter would um, have at that time in her life. And so, yeah, it does. I, I actually kind of love it because it's just like I can also help make the relationship better. They're like, oh, wow, yeah, my mom says that or my dad says that. And so, okay, yeah, maybe that does have some clout. So it's really kind of magical at the same time as I do that inner work with them, help bridge and build those beautiful connections and foundations with parents as well. So self-confidence is also very important, vital for our young people today, mm -hmm. especially young girls. But social media can sometimes wreak havoc wreak havoc on a lot of young girls and their confidence. Absolutely, yeah. And I mean, we're in this age where they're, it's, everything's blowing up and parents are parenting in an age of social media that we've never experienced before, right? So you look at TikTok, the predators, the research, all around that stuff. And so along with that, yeah, I mean, we have so many filters now on social media. And so these young women are seeing these images and thinking everybody's perfect. And that's a word that I hear a lot in my academy. Well, perfect, or this is perfect, or I look over at her, right? And so it's just really helping them disconnect from some of that. And like I tell them, you run your own race. Like get like the blinders on like a horse and what are you focused on and who do you want to be? And when you're looking over here and comparison, because that's what that breeds, as well as also um, breeds like bullying. And so people just think, oh, well, I can say something behind a screen and well, whatever. And so the pain that happens or that they've learning how to communicate, right? They're not learning this face to face or the power of communication. And so it's just this back and forth all on the media um, sites or... So how do you really explain, Renee, to a young person that what these trolls are saying on Twitter or Instagram is really irrelevant? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's... You know? And it's not it that is important. true. And I think it's keyboard warriors, right? Well, yeah, right. That's yeah. very well said. And so I think what it boils down to is I really help them see like that through the mindset work that they get to decide what they believe. And so I teach them to ask those pertinent questions and to not. And once again, to take their focus off of that. Like, why would you spend so many hours trolling anyways and giving your time and energy to that? And so where do you want your focus to be and who do you want to be and where do you want your time to be? And then they're kind of like, like, oh yeah, well that drains me to be doing that. And so just helping them develop those success habits and those strategies to not even be as tempted to go there. How important is it for a young girl to have a mentor? I think it's huge. I think it's everything. Like, I think you look at the resiliency model and I think that our teenagers, they need a team. Like, if they need a counselor, 
great, let's get them in for a counselor. If they need a coach, let's, let's get them with a coach. Like, let's buoy them up and support them in any way that they can. So they need that person that can be strong enough to also not buy into the lies that they're believing about themselves or also buy into some of their manipulation, right? Where they're just kind of like, oh, well, that's how it is. But someone who's a strong, confident woman who can look at them and go, no, I'm going to actually challenge you on that. I'm going to stand in this space with you. I'm going to hold grace for you and I'm going to hold you to a higher level of who I know you say you want to be. And then they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> Are there certain limits of what a mentor can and cannot do? And the reason I ask that, as a parent myself, a lot of times my kids would want to go down a certain path. I know this path will lead to destruction. Yeah. They're going to fall flat on their face because I went down a similar path when I was their age. Yeah. It's like, guys, it's not going to end well for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? So please don't go down the path, but you still have to let go, let God, let them do it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they fail. It's like, oh my goodness. They're like, you know what? Dad, mom, you were right. Right, right. So with the mentor, do you have to allow them to go through a similar path, um, similar experience? Well, yeah, like, I mean, I can mentor them through those things, but if that's who they're saying they don't want to be, like, I don't know, it seems like I can hold, I have some clout there, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm not saying that they don't make mistakes, and sometimes failure is our greatest teacher, right? So I say to my girls, it's not about failing, but it's about never quitting. And so, like, what do you learn from those mistakes? And so, yeah, I mean, helping them understand that, hey, these, these will be the choices, but the choices also have consequences. You can make the choice, but you also don't, don't get to choose the consequence. And so I think when you explain it to them in certain ways and help them see bigger picture, sometimes they do take a step back. And I mean, really, let's be honest, right? Because as parents, when we're saying, don't do this, don't do that, when they're trying to assert their independence and they want to find their way, they feel like by saying, well, I'm going to do that, right? They feel like that. Sometimes in rebellion. Perhaps, in rebellion, right? right? Yeah. But I think as a coach and somebody who can support a parent and saying, OK, well, I understand why your mom would say that, because let's have a look at this. This is how this could play itself out. And then, you know, get them out of that defiance, but get them more into alliance. And then they're kind of like, okay, I do want to do that. What's good for me? Renee, how can we give our girls more of the tools they need to succeed in life today? Mm -hmm. Well, I believe that's part of um, sending them to me. <laughs> There you go. But I, I do believe, like, as parents today, what I kind of see as a weakness is that we want to be their friends. Right? We want them to like us, and we're so much invested in wanting them to like us that sometimes it's hard for us to step in our full empowerment and say, okay, this, I want you to look at this. I, I want to challenge that mindset. Or if they're complaining and being in complete victim mode all the time, instead of us trying to fix it and make it better, to just actually, as a mom, as a dad, you know, be in our own sense of self and go, okay, well, I get that. You can choose to continue to think that. But then this is how you're going con to con continue to feel. So you get to decide. You know, it's interesting. I'm glad you brought that up, Renee, mm -hmm. because a lot of times as a dad, I'm a problem solver. I want to fix it. Totally. And then my wife says, no, you're not supposed to fix it. Just leave it alone. But I want yeah. to. I want to yeah. help. I, I, I know I can help, right? Right. And so that's frustrating for me sometimes as a father. Yeah. But it's also not about stepping back because sometimes I see parents just step away and they'll be like, oh, well, they're 18, they're 16. I guess they got to just learn it. And I'm not, I don't buy into that philosophy either. I buy into, okay, I am that person and I'm going to stand there in that space and I'm going to hold that space for them. And if they're going to cry and wine or whatever, that I'm just going to still be there and I'm still going to coach them through it and just be like, hey, well, you get to choose or how could you get yourself out of that or how could you think of that differently or what else could that mean? So as that parent standing in that space and not letting them be the victim or not letting them man manipulate you, right? Or as a parent going, okay, wow, that's bringing up my childhood thing that I wanted to fit in. So maybe I'm compromising and letting my daughter, you know, go do these things because I didn't get to do those things. And so it's a whole complexity. And so I work with parents and teenage girls to kind of just help them create the tapestry of that beautiful relationship and how to dance together. So how can we help our young people today learn how to develop good habits, not bad habits? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I think that takes as a parent modeling it as well. Right? I mean, how much time as a parent do we spend on social media and wasting our time and energy? Or, you know, how much of time as parents do they see us, like, not getting up or laying our stuff out the night before or using a day timer or being committed to our goals, committed to our dreams, committed to our personal work? So I really, a lot of it is modeling. And then um, that's where I just love getting our kids and our teenage girls, especially in front of people, like in front of people like me that can say, hey, these are decisions of destiny. And if you start implementing this, or how are you going to think about this, or carve out that spiritual time for your 
yourself so that you can really be connected on the inside so that you can be full of purpose and that you can, you know, when something comes, you can have been like, okay, no, I know how I'm going to handle that. Or this is my goal or this is my focus. So it really all starts internally. And so how getting them really connected to those places and as parents, you know, carving out that space and that energy and those discussions around that. So are you a parent yourself? I absolutely How many am. kids? I have two beautiful daughters. So, okay. Yes. So tell me about some of the challenges you faced as a parent with two young, beautiful women. Yeah. Well, they're 25 and 23 now. So. Okay. Maybe <laughs> many years ago. Many years ago. Maybe 15, yeah. Yeah, you know, I don't 15 know. 18 years ago. But really, I think for them, sometimes I've gone back and said to them, you know, how how did you do this or why this? And I mean, it was because I... What worked and what didn't, right? Totally, yeah. yeah. And it was because I modeled it. I mean, they saw me and I'm not perfect. And if I wasn't perfect at something, I definitely would admit that and say, okay, well, let's work on this together or this will be something that will really move us forward. And we kind of get the family on board and I mean it was just the three of us for 17 years so yeah it's just really boils down to what are you going to put into practice as a family on a day-to-day -day basis and having those discussions about what it really does mean to be successful and did you use some yeah. of those experiences as a parent to model some of the programs with Beautiful Inside Academy? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about some of those programs yeah. that you offer. Well, I do group coaching. So I run a group coaching academy for 13 weeks every uh, twice a year. And I do private one-on-one -on -one coaching with teenage girls all year long. Um, I also do events and have been working with moms and have been um, coaching some moms as well. So how can we do that? How can we help our relationship with our daughter better? So that's a lot of what I'm offering right now. What advice would you give to a lot of moms today to really strengthen that relationship with their daughters? Okay, I love that question. So the question I often put forth to my moms is, who do you need to be so she can be who she needs to be? And so it is like Dr. Christian Northrup kind of talks about it like this. It's kind of like, like osmosis. So when we're engaged in personal work, when we're modeling um, healthy relationships, when we're modeling healthy self-talk, when we're help or modeling healthy body image, so all of those things. So my coaching with the moms is like, where are those areas where you still feel that you need to up level? Or those areas that you see in your daughter that she's struggling, do you, does she mirror that? from you as well and so it's not about shaming or blaming it's just about this exciting exploration of how can we heal that within us as moms so that automatically can give our daughters a different launching pad from. how can we help our daughters achieve their full potential in life well, I truly believe it's mindset work. It's not being the victim. It's like really helping being them. Being the victor, right? Yeah, exactly. Being the victor and unpacking what are those gifts and what is your purpose and what are those decisions of destiny and how to give them those inner strength and those inner tools when those storms come and to not be seeking so much external validation, but teaching them how to validate from within and teaching them how to connect to their spiritual source and teaching them how to access you know all of that those giftings on the inside and then we'll see what strong young women do right like right now I have and they could be mentors to other young women right absolutely I've been where you are totally let me show you the way absolutely and that's kind of my mission like I have 19 powerhouse teenage girls in my academy right now and I just was like you watch out for them because these are our future leaders that's awesome mm -hmm. now you have mother daughter events as well Tell yes. me a bit about this. Yeah, I do. So lots of times I'll have the moms and then I'll have mothers and daughters come together. And it's just about how do we really strengthen this relationship? How do we bond together? Because at the end of the day, like it is such a sacred, beautiful relationship. And I know for me, being a mom has just been one of the greatest gifts. And one of the things that I just want to shout from the rooftops that I feel like I've been able to do so well. And so bringing them together in that space of honor and just having the girls understand that this woman right beside you. I mean, she was your age once too. And they're like, really? It's like, oh, I never thought of it that way. Right. But you know, it's like a a access her wisdom, like let her speak into your life or girls, you know, how can you look at, look at this differently? You know, when your mom's telling you, Hey, this is what I want for you. And then just teaching the moms how to talk to the girls and just doing a lot of that work so that they can see each other a little bit more clearly. What can parents learn from their kids? So much. Cause I mean, as, as oh, parents, yeah. we like to teach our kids lots, yeah. right? So. 
Oh, I think that our kids are our greatest teachers. And so the wounding or the things that they're dealing with, it's just like, and the way they're reacting, sometimes it does have something to do with us. It has to do with like, okay, well, how have I allowed that behavior? You know, what do I need to heal in me? Or like, for example, like when my daughter turned 18, you know, I was just like a lot more paranoid because that's where some stuff had happened to me. And so, but yet that was a gift because it was like, okay, Mama Bear, time to heal that. And so then I can graciously say to my daughter, wow, I'm realizing this. And sorry if I've been like overprotective, but, and then that bonded us closer together. And so it's just a beautiful, beautiful mirror if we choose to look at it that way. Renee yeah. Peterson with Beautiful Inside Academy. Thanks so much for joining me in studio today. Thank you. On behalf of all of us here at Bridge City News, I'm Hal Roberts. God bless and thanks so much for watching.